Yeah, buddy, you're on. <laughs> I'm behaving today. Sort Father of. Brian. Maybe. Happy anniversary. 26th no year of ordination. Yay! We're lucky to have you. Oh, good grief. I don't want anything. I'm just being nice. Pull up your skirts. Yeah. <laughs> Saint for today, a, uh, a Mexican, uh, Christopher Magalanus, and 21 uh, diocesan priests and three laymen. They were either shot or hanged between 1915 and 1920. 37, for their association with the Cristero Uprising, when, which opposed the anti-Catholic government in Mexico. Um, the Cristero mar motto was, long live Christ the King and the Virgin of Guadalupe. So, uh, sometimes we have a tendency to think that martyrs and saints and all that are somebody way, way in the past. Here are people very close to our own times. So today, as we begin to pray this Eucharist, um, we begin by meditating on the uh, entrance antiphon. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My friends, as we begin to pray this Eucharist, we turn to the Father and we ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who made the priest St. Christopher and his companions faithful to Christ the King, even to the point of martyrdom, grant us through their intercession that persevering in confession of the true faith, we may always hold fast to the commandments of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The readings for today. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath he entered the, into discussion in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ is Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus, named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to the synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians who heard believed and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our response, the Lord has his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 16, verses 16 through 20. And Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while later, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the old calendar, before a lot of the liturgical changes were made, today we would be celebrating the Feast of the Ascension. That has been transferred to uh, this coming Sunday. But if you are watching the readings that we've had over the last week, and as we will continue to have them, they are all pointing towards basically the Ascension and the uh, Pentecost event. They are together. When Jesus is talking about his return to the Father, no longer being visibly present to the disciples, in his stead, he has promised them that he would send his spirit, the advocate, to permeate that community, to continue his mission. Now, if you stop and consider it, if Jesus had remained present, visible to his community, that handful of disciples, what would have naturally have occurred was that they would have suppressed their, their own uh, initiatives, their own talents, their own abilities, their own individuality. They would have suppressed it in favor of him. They would have totally and completely continued to look to him for guidance, for direction, for everything. He wanted his community to be filled with his spirit, to be permeated by that spirit so it could transmit his message to the world. And you hear that over and over again. When he sends them out, the Great Commission, to go out and spread his word, the good news, to baptize in his name. This is one reason for the apostle, for the ascension to take place in order for the spirit to descend upon them. That event that we will be celebrating in what, about 10 days from now. The entire history of salvation culminates not in the resurrection, but in the flooding of the Spirit into the people's minds and hearts to fulfill the vision of the prophet Joel. We place our needs before our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church for its guidance. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? For these we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions we hold within the privacy of our own hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this is pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity, cleanse me of all of my sins. My friends, let us pray that my sacrifice in yours 
may be found acceptable by God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from thy hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all his holy church. And let us pray. In honor of the precious death of your just ones, O Lord, we come to offer that sacrifice from which all martyrdom draws its origin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Christopher and his companions, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, and let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, may the receiving of your body and blood not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me a protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. In the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. As we celebrate by this divine banquet the heavenly victory of the blessed martyrs Christopher and his companions, we beseech you, Lord, to bestow victory on those who eat here below, eat as victors from the tree of life in paradise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Um, Clarification. The uh, novena for Pentecost will begin tomorrow and run through uh, next week for nine days. But beginning tomorrow, we'll pray that. If you have the program from last night, you have the novena at the very end of that. Um, also, the uh, we had talked about Friday evening having a discussion about the requirements of the diocese and how we were implementing them here for uh, this group. Uh, small opening of, of the churches for public masses. Uh, yesterday there was a uh, notice sent out to all of the parishioners by email, I believe, that uh, gave the specific instructions that the diocese is ordering us to implement. So I would ask you to, if you have a copy of that, read down through it. It's uh, fairly direct, fairly, uh, um, fairly direct in, in what the bishop is expecting of us to do. And that is what we will be implementing here on Sunday at the two public masses, 8.30 and 11.30. May you all have a very blessed and very peaceful day.